Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and I welcome you to the Institute of Directors Ghana Yee Seminar on the topic Critical and Creative Thinking in Corporate Governance and Decision Making. We hope once again we have this opportunity to sharpen our source and try to appreciate the importance and significance of good corporate governance practice in Ghana. At this stage, I welcome the Vice President of the Institute of Directors, Ghana Lady Reverend Mrs. Angela Carmen Apia, our host and moderator for today's session. Lady Reverend, I welcome you as our moderator for today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ite. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for life. We thank you for the gifts that you have so graciously given us. And we thank you for the opportunity you have given for us to reflect, to take stock, and to align or realign. We ask that you grace us with your presence. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, today we are sharpening our souls once again. And the critical questions are what informs our decisions as leaders, as directors, as managers, as board members? What can we say about the quality of our decisions? How critical are our thoughts? What about the place of creativity and innovation, especially with our new normal VUCA COVID world? Ladies and gentlemen, today we are hoping to share knowledge and best practice to inform our decisions going forward. On our program for today, we will have some brief remarks from the president of the Institute. We will have the speaker talk to us for a total of about 45 minutes. We'll have about 25 minutes for questions, answers, and other deliberations, including networking. And then we'll receive closing remarks from the president then depart after closing prayer. Without wasting much time, may I invite Mr. Aite to come back to share some addresses, introductory addresses with us. Please be assured that you will receive a recording of this afternoon, this evening's uh, meeting recording. And for us to engage, you can use the reaction buttons, and I will also read those who post their chats in the chat spaces. Thank you very much, Mr. Aite. Any other acknowledgements for us? Thank you very much, um, Lady Reverend. And um, let me take this opportunity to welcome our partners from ACGN, African Corporate Governance Network, from the various countries on the continent, and then also our members. Um, it's also very important also for me to sort of acknowledge our council members who are also on this program. So to all our members, to our partners, wherever they are on this continent, Institute of Directors Ghana, we welcome you to this afternoon's um, seminar. Indeed, it's also very important for us to appreciate that Institute of Directors Ghana is a professional institution established in 1999 to primarily promote good corporate governance in Ghana through training, consultancy services, advisory services, research, and advocacy. And also we champion professional directorship in this country. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, we are so excited this afternoon for this program. Thank you so very much. Madam Moderator, I yield back time to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. May I humbly invite the president of the Institute in the person of Mr. Roxon K. Dobega to give us some brief opening remarks. And for your information, Mr. President is on a journey. He's in transit. His passion has driven him to join us. And we would like to hear from him. Mr. President, may we hear from you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Vice President. 
Um, good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I wish to welcome you all to our monthly seminar. Uh, a special welcome to our colleagues uh, from the continent, my colleague chairs, and uh, my council members, fellow members of the Institute of Directors in Ghana. Indeed, it's always a joy to have a session to enhance our capacity. And today's session is one of the critical sessions that are needed in every boardroom. Without critical thinking skills, without the ability to be creative and innovative, I don't think that we'll have very lasting good you know, decisions in the boardroom. And so today's um, presentation, I believe, will open uh, our minds to some critical tools we need to enhance our decision making. And I believe we will all participate very actively in today's seminar. And at the end of the day, we will renew our knowledge, share knowledge, share experiences, and enhance our corporate governance uh, knowledge. I'm very happy uh, to join you, and I hope that I'll be able to be part all through, if the network permits me. I wish you all uh, um, a joyful seminar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Now we have been waiting for this. We have been on our marks. And we thank you, Mr. President, for blowing the whistle. To introduce the special speaker for us is Mr. Aiti. Mr. Aiti, kindly introduce our presenter. Thank you so very much. And I'm honored um, with this privilege to introduce our main speaker for today. He is Professor John Bright Kabla Aheto. Professor Aeto has been in the academia all his life since 1971. He's a tenured full professor whose teaching and research areas cover accounting, auditing, law, corporate governance, corporate finance, international finance, critical and innovative thinking, strategic management, fraud and forensic accounting, and auditing. He has taught in the USA for 26 years on his return to Ghana in 1996. He has also taught in University of Ghana Business School, he's taught in Gimpa, he's taught in KNUST, he's taught in many other schools and universities in this country. He's an international trainer and consultant, and indeed, he's also a mentor to many. Professor has served in the following positions, Chairman of the Accreditation Visitation Teams of the National Accreditation Board. He's been an external moderator for many universities and also a fellow of the Institute of Directors, Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you, Professor John Bright Kabla Aheto, as our main speaker for today. Prof. Yes, sir. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, on this platform. Good afternoon, Prof. Yeah. We are really going to do a very quick job with a topic that is very, very deep, very, very important for us as board members, as leaders, and as decision makers. We have heard about thinking. We've heard about my thought process. We've heard about the word critical, but we've never looked at the word critical in the sense which it is meant to. We normally look at it in a negative sense, but the word critical, as we are going to discuss today, is a very, very important word for us. The word creative, the word innovative, and the word good, if you link it with thinking, it's a very important tool that we need to have as leaders, as board members, as decision makers. So the issue, the topic is the critical thinking in our professional life. Yes, it's a different thing in our private personal life. It's a different thing in our social life, but we are talking right now about just our professional life. 
And being a board member is part of our professional life. Very often, when we see a human being seated like this statue, people will ask, in my area, will ask, what are you thinking about? And the answer we we'll get is, oh, nothing, nothing. But that person is seriously thinking about something. It's deep, very deep in thought. So why will he be saying nothing? Either he doesn't want to share with you, or really he was not thinking. He was just sitting down and pondering over something. But even that is thinking. But that thinking may not be critical. So we are going to look at a lot of definitions that emphasize what it is that we, we mean when we say critical thinking. Very often, we hear the following statements. It is not uncommon for people to say, oh, I thought it was no big deal. Why is it no big deal? Uh, some people will say, oh, I just wasn't thinking. You are talking to people, you're a board member, you're making a presentation, and you didn't think it was any big deal? It cannot be. Poor decision makers tend to lack sound reasoning skills. So what we are looking at is reasoning. But we hear often people saying, oh, but I cannot think about everything. How am I supposed to know? When you occupy a position as a leader, as a board member, you are supposed to know. You are supposed to know close to everything. And if you don't, don't pretend. Own up that I don't know, but don't pretend at all. As a leader, as a board member in your professional life, because you'll be misleading yourself and you'll be misleading other people and people will not be coming up with the right decision that they should come up with. So therefore, there is a link between what people say and their critical thinking. We are going to, today we are going to focus more on just two types of thinking, critical and creative. We'll compare them and we'll see the difference. And we'll see how we use, what we use, which one we use. So when we talk about thinking, we are talking about thought process. And there are very important elements of the thought process. When we are thinking, number one, there is a reason why we are thinking. There is a purpose. There is a goal. There is an objective for that particular thinking. There is always an issue, something at hand, something, a problem. There's an issue at hand. That is why we are thinking. You just don't think in vacuum. You think about something. You think in order to solve a problem or to find a solution to a problem. And your thought process is going to use information, data, facts, observation, and experiences. All of that come into play when we are deep in thought. We always engage in interpretations and inferences. Conclusions and solutions. As simple as the word thought or thinking may be, these are issues that you are going through without knowing. There are concepts, theories, definitions, laws, principles, models, rules, and guidelines that come into play when we are thinking about something. Most importantly, there are assumptions. The danger is the assumptions that we are using is not clear to somebody. It's not known to somebody. So after you make your statement, when you are talking, they don't know where you are coming from. They don't know your lens. They don't know the assumptions you have made. They really don't even know the biases that you are exposed to. Most important thing in critical thinking is to be keenly aware of your assumptions and your own personal biases, which is 
at the back of your mind when you are talking. But that's the danger. We don't know. And when somebody's talking and you're not aware of the assumptions or biases, it is our duty to make sure that we get the assumptions and the biases very clear. There are things we call axioms. There are things we take for granted. There are things we call facts. There are things we call truths. But the question is how many people know the difference in order to be very clear in their mind when they are dealing with them that these are assumptions, these are facts, these are axioms, this is just taken for granted, but why should we take something for granted? And whatever it is that you are taking for granted, people must know, others must know. So we are really dealing with serious communication. Most importantly, there are implications and consequences of our thinking and whatever we are thinking about. We, everybody talks from a point of view. Everybody talks from their lens, their lens, their environment, their experience. Everybody speaking from that angle. So therefore, it is incumbent upon us for us to make sure that our lens is very clear. The angle we are coming from is known to the people we are interacting with. So point of view, the frame of reference, the perspective and the orientations are very important to the speaker or the thinker. These are what you call elements of thought, purpose, issue, information, interpretation and inferences, concepts, theories, assumptions, implications and consequences, and importantly, point of view. We all have different points of view. We all have different angles from which we are coming from. It's very important that we are aware of these elements of thought. They are very important elements of thought. It is our duty to make sure that these elements are clear in our presentation and in our thinking, and the people we are interacting with in the team are aware of where we are coming from. The two things we are going to discuss today is critical thinking and creative thinking. The word critical to a lot of people is a negative word. Why are you being so critical? Is anything wrong with being critical? By the time we finish with the next maybe 45 minutes, we are going to realize that it is very important to be critical. It's very important that we know what is meant by critical. So let's look at critical. We can look at deep. We can look at the word deep, deep. We can look at the word why. Everything you say, ask yourself why. Why? 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 You realize that by the time you cannot answer a particular why, you've really come to the end and the root cause of what it is you are dealing with. Why, 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 why? Ask yourself that question. You, the one who is thinking, ask yourself that question. So critical thinking is analytical. As opposed to creative thinking, which is generative. Generate new ideas, come up with options, options. But for critical thinking, we are dealing with only one issue and we are trying to find out the root cause of that issue, the root cause of that issue. As opposed to, we're not trying to find a root cause, but we are just generating ideas from which we'll deal with options and then we can create alternatives. Critical thinking is convergent as opposed to divergent, which is creative thinking. Critical thinking is vertical. And we can look at creative thinking as lateral. If you are a, an oil exploration firm, there are two ways you can make a mistake. You have not gone deep enough. You are just 
one mile away or half a mile away from hitting the oil and you stop or you have you are drilling the hole to the left to the right of where the oil is so we need both critical thinking deep thinking and we need lateral thinking broad wide because if you're not broad enough you will miss it if it's not deep enough you miss it so we need to combine the two broad and deep that is what you call good thinking yes we can add innovative thinking also but when we talk about critical thinking and creative thinking the sum of the two is what you call good thinking critical thinking as you say is vertical creative is lateral critical thinking is probabilistic probabilistic and creative thinking is possibility or plausibility. This is possible, this is plausible, but critical thinking is more specific. What is the probability of 40%, 30% in your ballrooms, in your professional life, somebody is going to ask you, what is the probability? Somebody is going to ask, is that possible? Yes, it's possible. Is it possible? It may not be, but it could be plausible. These are issues we have to deal with. Critical thinking is about hypothesis testing, whilst creative thinking is hypothesis formulation and development. In critical thinking, we are looking for the answer. In creative thinking, we are looking for an answer. Critical thinking is specific, analytical. Creative thinking is divergent, generative. So it may not deal with one particular answer, may deal with different answers depending upon the environment and the situation. Critical thinking is very, very objective, extremely very objective. By the time we finish the next 30 minutes, you're going to realize that yes, critical thinking is up because you get rid of all biases all the biases assumptions that are not possible you get rid of them but creative thinking is subjective it depends we also know that we are looking for the answer as opposed to we are looking for an answer the answer there's a particular answer we are looking for Critical thinking is close-ended, as opposed to creative thinking that is open-ended. Close-ended, it means certain things are not part of it, but creative thinking is open-ended. Anything goes. Let's take in everything. Let's, let's determine all the options before we start elimination. Critical thinking is involved with elimination, but Creative thinking is about, listen, let's put in everything. No comments, just put in everything. We're also looking at reasoning, reason, reason. Provide the reason. What is your reason? Why are you saying that? Creative thinking is most often speculative. Logic is the essence of critical thinking, logic as opposed to intuition. Intuition, I think, from my point of view, no. But in critical thinking, it must be logically sound. In critical thinking, we are, look, we are saying, yes, but, yes, but, I'm saying yes, but these are subject to my assumptions, my biases the environment in which I'm working. On creative thinking, yes, and yes, and you are talking about yes, there are other possibilities. That's what we are looking at. So in summary, these are the two most important aspects of thinking. Analytical, convergent, vertical, probabilistic, judgmental, hypothesis testing, objective, the answer, 
cross-ended, linear, reasoning, linear or vertical, reasoning, logic, yes, but. That is critical thinking. On the other hand, creative thinking is generative, divergent, lateral, possibility, possibility, suspended judgment, hypothesis formulation, subjective, an answer, just an answer, this may not be the answer, open-ended, meaning we can, we can let in other things. It's associative, it's speculative, intuition, and this with yes, and so we want to know that addition, that and. Yes, but, yes, but we may be taking out something or we may be making somebody aware of the biases and the foundation upon which all of this is based. As a critical thinker, you are one of those thoughtful people that Margaret Mead spoke about as being in a position to change the world. You may not be that many, but you can change the world. So Margaret Mead says, change in the world. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that has ever happened. People who have changed the world are people very few and thoughtful. So our thought process is very, very important. It's very, very important. As a board member, as a leader, you are part of that few thoughtful and committed people who can change the world. It is therefore important that you understand what critical thinking is. The world we live in, critical thinking. If we go by critical thinking, the world we live in is very, very scary. Very, very scary. And we might not have thought about it, but let's look at the world we live in. Richard Paul, an elder, the gurus, modern day gurus in critical thinking. This is what they say about the world we live in today. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, but today. It says a world in which information is multiplying, even as it is swiftly becoming obsolete and out of date. A world in which ideas are continually reconstructed, retested, and retaught, where no one cannot survive with simply one way of thinking. Nobody can survive with simply one way of thinking. There's a need for divergence. We live in a world where one must respect the need for accuracy and precision. We know there's a difference between accuracy and precision. Be accurate does not mean that you are precise. And meticulousness, a world in which job skills must be continuous, must continually be upgraded and perfected, even transformed. This is the world we live in. We might not be aware, we might have taken it for granted, but when we are talking about critical thinking, it comes to mind that we need to look at it very carefully. A world in which information is multiplied, new information is coming every day, every minute, before one minute passes, one hour passes, the world you know is no longer that world. And if you are talk, we are supposed to talk about who is the president of this country, that country, as of today, you need to be very careful because whatever you say may be wrong, completely wrong, completely wrong. Tunisia, completely wrong. So we are looking at a world where ideas are continuously restructured, 
retested and retort where one cannot survive by simply one way of thinking. We cannot simply, one way of thinking. There are people we call one way. No, those people cannot survive in the world in which we are today, where one must continuously adapt your thinking to the thinking of other people. And if you don't know about their thinking, how can you adapt your thinking to their thinking? Where one must respect the need for accuracy and precision as a board member, as a leader, accuracy and precision is, it's not a question of about, no, no, no. We are not talking about about one hour. We are talking exactly how many minutes and we are going to make a profit, about 2 million profit. What do you mean by two, about 2 million? Exactly how much profit are we going to? Oh, you know what? I cannot tell you exactly what, but you know what? Try as much as possible. Don't, don't give me a ballpark figure. Give me a figure I can hold on to, I can depend on. So we are looking at accuracy and precision and meticulousness, be very meticulous. A world in which job skills must be continuously be upgraded and perfected, even transformed. And when you look at the world, you're looking at work skills. Every time something new is coming to the world, everything new is coming to the profession in which you are. As an accountant, Every so often, every month, every two of uh, two months, there is a new accounting principle throughout to, that applies to the whole world. And I'm supposed to know. I cannot say I'm in Ghana, so I don't know. Nobody cares about that. You are a professional, global professional. You must know. You ought to know. You should have known. You ought to have known. That is the issue. That's the world we live in right now. In this world, there's a need for question, but a lot of us, we don't know how to ask questions. We don't ask questions. We presume we know. So again, Paul, an elder says, very few people really seek knowledge in this world. The best way to seek knowledge is to ask questions. Ask questions of yourself, ask questions of others. Mortal or immortal, very few really ask questions. Very few people ask questions because they presume they know it. They don't want to make a fool of themselves, so they don't ask the question. But you know, in my language, a child who asks questions can never be stupid or foolish. So they, you are encouraged to ask questions. They try to wring from the unknown the answers they have already shaped in their own minds by justification, explanations, forms of consolation without which they cannot go on in this world. They have some answers in their head. Instead of thinking about the answers to the current problem, they will not ask the question and challenge themselves and get other people's point of view, but they go by justification, explanations, consolations without which they cannot go on. To really ask is to open the door to the whirlwind. The answer may annihilate you or may annihilate the question. When you ask a question, what you know before you ask a question, what you thought the answer would be, you will be surprised about the answer you will get. You will be annihilated and the question will be annihilated. But there is a need for you to ask questions. But the, the fact is very few people seek knowledge by asking questions. Asking questions is one very important way in which we try to know. So as a critical thinker, you need to ask, why? Simple question, of why, why, why? Whatever your answer is, why, 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 why? You get deeper and deeper and deeper. 
When you want to go vertical, it's the same thing. Why? How? Why? How? That's what we are looking at. The problem and the challenge in critical thinking is everyone thinks, everyone, even ants think, mosquitoes, they think. Everyone thinks because it is our nature to do so. You know, when you say everyone, mosquitoes think, ants think. The question is this, however, much of our thinking by itself, if not challenge, if it's not critical, much of our thinking by itself is often very partial, biased, distorted, uninformed, and prejudiced. We will be defensive and say, no, no, that doesn't apply to me. It applies to you as much as it applies to me. Much of our thinking left to itself, if it's not critical, if it's not creative, if it's not innovative, it's not logical, that thinking by itself is often partial because we have not asked that many whys and that many hows we have not asked. It's often biased by what we prefer, by only what we know. It's often biased. It is often distorted. It is uninformed. It's not based upon facts. It's not based upon evidence. It's not based upon data, analyzed data. It's not based upon that. And because of that, it's often prejudiced. It's only from our point of view. Everything is us, I think, but who are you? You are nobody. So the quality of our life that we live the quality of what we produce, the quality of what we make or build depends upon the quality of our thought. So we're not only talking about thinking or thought, we are talking about qualitative aspects of that thought. Qual the quality of our thought determines our life, the quality of our life. Shoddy thinking is very, very costly. If you are thinking not systematic and scientific, it becomes shoddy thinking. And if you think shoddily, you are going to pay the price. Shoddy thinking is costly, both in money and the quality of our professional life. Shoddy thinking. Excellence in thought, however, must be systematically and scientifically cultivated, deliberately cultivated. We must develop ourselves in systematic and scientific way, in the way we think. And we must shoot for excellence in thinking in a scientific and systematic manner. We must make an effort. So now let, let's look at what is thinking. We are going to look at some definitions. Thinking is just what happens when we let our mind do its own thing. What we are given, what we are given for. What, why are we, why did God give us our mind? It's to be used to think. But the question is, if that thinking is not scientific and systematic, if it's not targeted, it's just a useless thinking. It is what we do when we deliberate thinking when we deliberate, when we reflect, when we ponder, when we explore, when we interpret, when we create, when we consider, and when we engage in a host of additional cognitive processes. We can look at Bloom, cognitive processes. That is, we deliberate, we reflect, we ponder over, we explore, we interpret, we create, we consider, and we engage in a host of additional cognitive processes. Any exercise of our cognitive or mental process of understanding of faculties that will involve evaluation. 
Critical thinking must be evaluative. Our thinking must be evaluative, must be analytical, must, must have a target, must have a purpose. Thinking needs to form your mind. Conscious thinking is thinking of which we are aware. There are times that may be attempt, oh, I don't even know what I'm thinking about. That cannot be conscious. Conscious thinking is deliberate thinking. It is a mistake to, to tie critical thinking too closely to destructive criticisms of other people. It's a mistake grounded in misinterpretation of the word critical. We always think about critical as negative. No, it is not negative. It is deliberate, scientific, and purposeful. That is critical, meaning that whatever you are thinking has a purpose. It's targeted towards something. It has taken your assumptions into account. It has taken your biases into account. It has inferences. It has conclusions. And definition of critical thinking. We understand critical thinking. These are the gurus of Paul and Elder. They say they understand critical thinking to be purposeful, self-regulatory judgment, which results in interpretations, analysis, evaluation, and inferences as well as explanation of the evidential, conceptual, methodological, criteriological, or contextual considerations upon which the judgment is based. We are talking about evidence, concept, methodology, criteria, context, considerations upon which your judgment or your thinking is based. Critical thinking is essentially a tool of inquiry. As such, critical thinking is a liberating force in education, professional life, social life, political life. It liberates you. You are free. You come to think for yourself. You make decisions for yourself. In your civic life, in your family life, it's liberating. It is empowering. Critical thinking is a pervasive and self-rectifying human phenomenon. When you are thinking critically, when you make a mistake, you yourself will know you make a mistake and you go back. And before you even open your mouth, you know what you are going to say, that's a mistake. That's an error, that's a bias. So therefore, you need to be very careful. It is self-regulatory. It is purposeful, it's judgmental. It's analytical. Now, let's look at the ideal critical thinker. You know what? It's just like football player. There are under five, and there are national football players. Under five. And we go and we clap for them. Then there is national. Even national, we are talking about international. World Cup. So let's look at the one we can call ideal critical thinker. The ideal critical thinker is habitually, the word is habitually, inquisitive, well-informed, trustful of reason, open-minded, flexible, fair-minded in evaluation, honest in facing personal biases, prudent in making judgments, willing to reconsider, clear about issues, orderly in complex matters, diligent in seeking relevant information, reasonable in the selection of criteria, focused in inquiry, and persistent in seeking results, which are as precise as the subject and the circumstances of inquiry permit. This is the ideal critical thinker. I'm not insulting anybody, but I want us to take a pen and paper and mark 
the various things that are in this definition. They say the critical thinker, the ideal thinker, the ideal critical thinker habitually, I mean habit, that's your habit, not periodically, not sometimes, but habitually you are inquisitive. You want to know why. The question is why, why, why? So as a result of trying to know why, you are well informed. You are trustful of reason. What is the reason? What you just say, what is the reason? Why? It's open-minded. You know what? I am wrong. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. I thought. I didn't get all the facts. Yes, you are open-minded. You should challenge yourself, criticize yourself, support the other person, be open-minded. He's flexible, fair-minded in evaluation, honest in facing personal biases or admitting personal biases, prudent in making judgments, willing to consider and reconsider, clear about the issue at hand. Are you clear before you're talking about it? Do you know what we are discussing? Are you clear? Have you analyzed it? Clear about the issues at hand. Orderly in complex matters, does not jump into issues, but takes them systematically. Very diligent in seeking relevant information in order to make up his mind. Reasonable in selection of the criteria to use. Focused in inquiry and persistent in seeking results which are as precise as the subject and the circumstances of inquiry. Our answer depends upon circumstances. Our answer depends upon how precise we want to be. That is the ideal critical thinker. We need to have a plan for ourselves, how to develop ourselves into critical thinkers. You are going to start from the floor and you are going to the ceiling. And if you look at your room, from the floor to the ceiling, there are a lot of critical thinkers over there. You need to find out which one you are. Are you on the floor? Are you at the ceiling? Are you somewhere in between? That is the ideal critical thing. I wish that we can actually take this particular slide, live this life, develop ourselves so that one day we ourselves will beat our chest and say, I am a critical thinker and be not only a critical thinker, but the ideal critical thinker. So, so that habitually, as a habit, as a second nature, you are actually doing the things that are listed here. Critical means exercising or involving careful judgment or judicious evaluation. Careful judgment or judicious evaluation. It is closely related to the Greek word or standard of judging. Critical is essentially concerned with thinking as judgment and evaluation are types of thinking. Further, the definition, the definition focuses attention on the types of thinking that involve the consideration of options, options, judgment relative to the standards that serve to identify the relevant ideal critical thinker. So understood, having look at the last three slides, the term critical is as used in this context of critical thinking is free from any negative connotation when first considered or when you first encounter the word. After the last two, three slides, you should have a different perspective on critical. Instead, it applies without prejudice. It applies to the systematic and evaluative thinking, wherever it might be found. It is not negative. Rather, it is without prejudice. Rather, it relates to the systematic and evaluative thinking. You are evaluating your thinking at the time you are thinking to make it 
more credible and better. You don't finish the thinking before you, you apply, before you determine, no. You determine it at the time you are thinking. You ask yourself, if you are thinking well, critically, you don't finish. Again, critical. Involve exercising or involving careful judgment or judicious evaluation. In, in any comment from anybody, any question from anybody, any comment? Any comment from anybody, any questions? Yes. yes. The comments so far are that this is very thought provoking. So the silence oh. may be that we are thinking about the things we want to talk about. Okay. We are critically thinking. Thank you. Are you critically or creatively thinking? Madam, are you creatively thinking or you're critically thinking? Probably Reverend you're trying to do both. You're trying to do both. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. A anybody else? A any comment? Any comment? Any comment? So, critical thinking involves conscious, consciously observing, analyzing, reasoning, and evaluating according to proven intellectual standards and principles. There are two of standards that your thinking must meet before you can say that you're a critical thinker. Two of standards. They are intellectual standards. And we look at those. And it is a unique kind of purposeful thinking that is systematic and habitual. It's not once in a while. It meets the intellectual standards. And we are going to look at the 12 intellectual standards. I ask uh, a security guard at Malcolm, every Sunday when I'm going to work, I try to go there and buy. And every time I go, the door is locked. So I met the security guy and I asked, this was Sunday. I said, sir, when do you open? In my mind, I was asking that Sunday, when would they open? The security guy says, Mondays to Fridays, we open this time to that time. Saturdays, we open this time to that time. Sundays, we open this time to that time. That's a security, a security guard I would have loved to promote. He has answered my question so that there is nothing left. There is nothing left for me to ask. I didn't ask him from Monday to Sunday, when do you open? I just, I was basing my question on that circumstance, that Sunday. Because I say, oh, I've been coming here for the last three Sundays and I see that you're not open. So when do you open? The man gave me the answer that I don't have to ask any more question at all. So let's look at seven dimensions of critical thinking. We identify and we ask summarize the problem. Identify, summarize the problem or the question or the issue at hand. 
two, we identify and present the learner's own hypothesis, perspective, and position as it is important to the analysis of the issue. We identify and consider all the salient relevant perspective and positions that are important to the analysis. We identify and assess the key assumptions and biases involved. We identify and assess the quality of supporting data and evidence, the quality of supporting data and evidence. Your decisions are going to be determined by the quality and the source of the information you are going to use. We identify and consider the influence of the context, the context, the environment in which the issue is being addressed. And we identify and assess the conclusions, the implications and the consequences. We must at the end determine or assess our conclusion, the implications of the conclusion and the consequences. That is critical thinking. That is critical thinking. Please, I, I, I want somebody to ask a question. Oh. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, in most of our boardrooms, we don't seem to be getting the quality decision that impacts the organizational performance. Is it as a result of the lack of critical thinking or what is the problem? Why? Yeah decisions we make sometimes in the boardroom, you know, do not turn the organization around? It's, it's, it's lack of the wrong choice of people to form the board. Their competencies, their background as critical thinkers. How do you know if Jonah Hato is a critical thinker? Why do you put him on the board? Who well, you don't know whether or not he's a critical thinker. You want people who are critical, creative, innovative, good thinkers on the board. But we look for certificates. We look for certificates. We look for reputation, not even character. We look for reputation and we put people on the board based upon that. But in the meantime, we don't know who they really are. We have not put them to the test. And why do we do that? How do we do that? That is, wow. that is the, uh, we don't know because we don't want people who will challenge us. We don't know, we don't want people who will rock the boat. And, you know, nobody really cares, seriously, nobody really cares. We just want a facade, we just want a pretense, we just want an appearance, we have a board. But how effective is that board? How much of critical thinkers are on that board? How much of people who actually do research prepare for board meetings? How many of them prepare for board meetings? If we were to give them a test exam, instead of having the board meeting, give them an exam on the papers that were distributed, the things they were supposed to know, how many of them will pass that particular test? The nominations committees might do a much more thorough, scientific, and systematic job of coming up with the people. How do they know about the people? They just heard about them. Have they ever interacted with them? Did they analyze the way they think? The answer is no. Somebody ca calls me and says, we want you to serve on my board. I say, what are you looking for in a board member? What are you looking for in a board member? For me, I speak my mind. I couldn't care whether this is your company. I speak my mind. I cannot be a civil servant. They will fire me in one day or two days. So what are you looking for? Are you looking for yes sir, yes sir? Or you are looking for people who will actually challenge you, even the owner, you the owner, and ask you to resign from the board yourself as the owner and will replace you. That was the aim. I didn't get, uh, I didn't get inv invited. <laughs> 
Bisa tuh beda? Bisa tuh beda? Oh. <laughs> I, I am sure that's the reason why you have not even invited me to ever serve on your board. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Hello. Yes. yes, go ahead. Yes, uh, thanks very much. That's prof. That's prof. Hello? Can yes, I go ahead. You? Okay, thanks very much, prof. Uh, I, I Thank like you. I like the concluding part that you were never invited. Never. I, I've always <laughs> begged him. I always beg him. I put myself at disposal. He never invited me. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, my, my concern about this critical creative thinking is formed from the fact that you see in Ghana, the whole educational system is not designed to train critical thinkers to ask the question, why? So in the few cases, when you find people like you beginning to ask the question, why? You are put in a different class. So when boards are formed with people who are not, let me say, competent or confident enough to ask the question, why? They all then became, they, they, they begin to take things like, oh, yes, sir, yes, sir, I agree. Going forward, how do we, let's say, catch them young, train a crop of people? Me, I'm a young guy anyway, just like one of your sons. How do we train them to be able to have the confidence in asking the question, why? Even to challenge authority. For example, if I'm in a board with you, and honestly speaking, and you speak, and there are very little chances that I'll ask you the question, why? And that is the problem we are carrying into the professional life. And it's tend not to give us very good results. What would be your opinion for the youth coming out to ask the question, why? Thank you. Over. For the, for the youth, we need to empower them to think critically and analytically. We need to empower them. We, you know what? Some tribes in Ghana, if you ask a question, they'll slap you and say, Children should not be asking questions. So how can that child grow up being creative, innovative, and critical in thinking? So our, our culture, a lot of our culture looks down on, does not encourage children who can be forceful, who can be critical, who can be innovative, who can be perceptive. We don't, we, we don't allow that. For me, I have, I have a lady in my, in my house. I said, speak up, speak, I want to hear you. And she said, yeah. I said, I want to hear you speak up. But I don't know, I've done that for the last maybe one year. But I don't know, I, don't, I just don't know. Okay, let's, let's look at the uh, next few slides because the time is against us. Critical thinking must meet 12 intellectual standards. Whatever it is for you to say you're a critical thinker, whatever it is you are saying, number one, clarity. What you are saying, is it clear? Not clear to you, clear to the person you're talking to. It must be unambiguous. It must be unambiguous, meaning you cannot have two different interpretations at least. Number two, it must be accurate. Accurate means the truth, verifiability, more or less as an axiom, as an axiom. Three, truth, fact, axiom, precise, very meticulous. That is what we mean by accuracy. Can your statement stand up to that test? Accuracy, truth and verifiability, precision, details, specific, that's precision, relevance, connected to, bearing on, having relationship to, having an influence on, depth, complexities and significant issues the complexity and significance of the issues. Deep, 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 
Critical thinking is about going deep, deep, deep. Creative thinking is, is about why, why. So the breath, the breath, the alternative points of view, breath, the alternative points of view, not only your narrow point of view, but take other people's point of view into account. You yourself develop alternative points of view. Death, meaning go deep as much as you can. Logic, making sense, following from. You know what? It must, that, that this statement and the other statement must make sense. They must follow from. They must relate to one another. Significance, universal importance to other people. Not only to you, it might be significant to the other people. Completeness, the breath and death of what you are saying. Is it complete breath and death? We can even add innovation. Importantly, fairness. Fairness. Fairness, we are looking at fairness as equity, just. Not equality, equity, and just, that's fairness. We are looking at these 12 standards of intellectual curiosity, universal intellectual standards, clarity, accuracy, precision, relevance, depth, breadth, logic, significance, completeness, fairness. That these are the standards that your thought, that whatever you say, whatever you contribute on the board room, these are the two of condition that must be satisfied. And nobody is going to tell you that, oh, you missed this one. You yourself, you are going to tell yourself that, that you missed this one because as you are talking, you are evaluating what you are saying. And you don't wait for somebody to point out the gap in what you have just said. You don't wait for somebody to say, have you considered this? You must consider this. That is why we get papers way ahead of time. That's why we should get papers way ahead of time before board meetings. And we are supposed to read, investigate, research, and prepare for our board meetings. As a leader, you must be ready. You must be ready. And in addition to those 12 standards, we also have intellectual traits, intellectual. Thinking is about the intellect. And they are very important. One, intellectual integrity or honesty. You need to be honest with yourself. You need to make sure that your biases, your personal biases, do not cloud what you are saying. You must be honest, transparent, and you must say the truth, the fact. You must be precise, you must be meticulous. So intellectual integrity, there should not be anywhere where anybody can punch hole in what you are saying. Intellectual humility, yes, you know, but you know what, don't rub it on our faces. Be humble and pull other people to you. Confidence in reason, confidence in reason. Believe in reason, what is the reason? You must have confidence in reason, look for the reason. Seek for the reason. Intellectual perseverance. <laughs> you know what? You are just two minutes away from getting the answer. And you stopped. Why did you stop? Persevere, persevere, persevere. Fair-mindedness and objectivity. Be fair-minded. You know, to the point where you can deny yourself something. You can deny your family, your children something and give it to the other person if you are in a position to judge. Intellectual, intellectual courage. You know what? Have what it takes to disagree with even the chairman of the board. You are only 30 years old, the chairman is 70 years old, but if you have the courage based upon the fact, based upon your research, based upon evidence, based upon how precise, meticulous your research is, based upon what you have come up with, based upon how current, your finding is you should have the confidence to respectfully disagree with the chairperson. Don't ever be afraid of the chairperson. He's not God. Even God, even God, even God. 
changes his mind and makes mistakes. So intellectual courage, intellectual empathy, look at things from the other person's point of view. Pay attention to what the other people are saying. Intellectual autonomy and independence. Don't ever owe anybody on the board. If you owe anybody and because of that they put you on the board, please decline because you're not going to be effective. People will laugh at you. You know, when you're not talking well, people will laugh at you. There was a time there was no, no traffic light near ICAG. And stupid Ghanaians, intelligent Ghanaians, driving cars, instead of leaving the intersection free, people were, they went and they clogged up the intersection. And a madman, a madman came to the middle and started ordering them around. He stood in the middle and became the policeman. And the, the road was clear. The intersection was clear. And he was directing traffic. And people were moving. And I asked, these are bankers. These are accountants. These are lawyers. These are intelligent people. They could not leave the intersection free. In the US, we have four plus four. Meaning the one who came there first is the one who should go. The one who came there first is the one who should go. That is integrity. You know you are not the one who came first. So you wait till it is your turn. And nobody, nobody, nobody interferes with that flow, with that particular flow. So intellectual autonomy and independence. A well-cultivated critical thinker or professional raises vital questions, issues, and problems, formulating them clearly and precisely. He gathers and assesses relevant data and information using abstract ideas to interpret them effectively comes to well-reasoned and sound conclusions and solutions, testing them against relevant criteria and universal standards, the two of universal standards that we look at. That the result, when we become critical thinkers, is we will become open-minded, with alternatives and our systems of thought. who we'll communicate effectively and figuring out solutions that we actually need. Now, there are four, five levels of critical thinkers. That is how we are, we are going to go. Number one is what we call unreflective thinker. That's the person on the ground floor. That's the, the person on the floor unaware of significant problems in his thinking. That is the first level. Most people are unreflective thinkers. We don't reflect on what we are thinking. Then we go from that level higher up, we go to challenged thinkers. These are people who are faced with significant problems or flaws in the way they think and reason. At least they are aware that they have a problem. The beginning thinker, he tries to improve, but with that regular practice or consistency, he does not know how well he's doing. He doesn't have a coach. He doesn't have a system that he follows. From there, we, we come to practicing thinker, recognizes the need for regular and conscious practice of thinking. You must practice thinking just as much as you practice soccer or tennis. Then we come to advanced thinker. Advanced thinker advances in keeping with his thinking practice and processes. Then we have the master thinker. Good or best habits of thought have become second nature, habitual and automatic to this person. 
Second nature. He doesn't have to think about the way he's thinking. It's just automatic. So therefore, critical thinking is thinking about your thinking at the time you're thinking to make sure that your thinking is conformity with the intellectual standards of thinking. Critical thinking is thinking about your thinking at the time you are thinking, so as to make sure that your thinking is in conformity with intellectual standards, acceptable and accepted intellectual standards of, think, of thinking. It's time for us to take comments so that we can bring the, the session to an end. Mr. CEO. Yes, um, we're almost there and Madam Moderator will take over as soon as um, you get your, 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 conclu your, conclu your concluding remarks. So Madam Moderator. Oh, my concluding remarks is critical thinking involves you thinking about the way you are thinking at the time you are thinking to make sure that your thinking is in line with the intellectual standards, accepted intellectual standards, the two of standards of critical thinking. And that we have we have a range starting from challenged thinker to master thinker. And it takes time, it takes practice. You're going to lose a lot of friends. You're going to lose even your wife, you and your husband, because they're not going to understand you. So warn them before you start the exercise, before you start the journey. Any comments? So, Prof, um, yes. I'll, read, I'll, read, I'll read some comments from the chat box. Thank you. See them. Thank you. This one is from Israel. Israel says, very interested and mental to reckon with. And then this one comes from Jay Rule. Prof, how do you assess an individual's critical thinking capacity before appointing him or her to managerial or board position? You engage, you engage the person, you invite the person out, you go to places where the person is either speaking or is part of a panel, you listen to the person, you ask about other people, hoping that they know what the difference is. But the nominations committee must be proactive. They must have systems in place to make sure that when they roll that system out, whoever they catch in the name, is the one they are looking for. Thank you very much, Prof. Prof, we have another question here from Dr. Mike Juru from Zimbabwe. Dr. Mike Juru says, thank you, Prof. Your presentation is very insightful. How do you balance with challenging authorities? How do you balance with challenging authorities? Question from Dr. Mike Juru. Do you, under, do you understand the question to mean how do I balance critical thinking with perception by other people that I am challenging authority? Or does it mean that will the critical thinker challenge authority, which is a positive sense, as Rowling said? Is it the negative sense where I am misinterpreted as challenging authority? or in the positive sense where it is me challenging, truly challenging authority as I should. But who said, who said authority should not be challenged? Who are they? You know what, it is not rudeness. It is not rudeness. You need to challenge authority based upon facts, based upon evidence, based upon data, based upon theory, based upon concepts, based upon intellectual principles. There is no reason why we should not challenge authority. You know what? Abraham challenged God, didn't he? When God was going to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, who is Abraham to challenge God? So why are we afraid to challenge human beings when we are standing on solid ground with precise, meticulous, factual axioms of facts and the guy is making complete mistake, and we are going to keep quiet because it will be seen as challenging him. I told you I will never last in civil service more than one day. So, Prof. 
Yes. Oh, this is this is Freddy, a CEO of Directors Ghana. So Go from that perspective from um, um Dr. Mike Juru's uh, question and the um the perspective for insight that you provided. Yeah. Could it also be that within the um situation of our cultural background where the the way you put across the challenge, whether critical or innovative way, in terms of being decorous, you know, so does the background or the way you do the challenge, does that matter in this case? The way you do is fine. You know what, Mpacho <laughs> Oyabua? Mr. Sio, Mr. Sio, did you understand? Yes, did you I understand? Yes. yes I do. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Another question here from Sazan Diara. Okay. Prof, do you believe that the capacity of speaking truth to power? Prof, do you believe that the capacity of speaking truth to power, STP, could equip one to become a better critical thinker? This is coming from Sazan Diara. I, I will say yes. I'll, it will equip you, but you need to build upon it. You need to practice it. You need to build upon it. You need to practice it. You need to find exercises in critical thinking and do them and evaluate yourself. Team up with somebody, be critical thinkers and challenge yourself. Punch holes in each other's statements or solutions or alternatives or options. Thank you, Prof. And I have another comment here from Isaac. It says, great to be learning from you again, Prof. I never regret meeting you any time to learn. Then um, we have a comment here, which says- Thank you very much. Prof from Primera Prince is saying, we need to have a part two of this session. So um, we have a comment like that here. We need part and two and part three. We need part two and part three. Then we can take our time. But 45 minutes definitely is not good enough. Well, well, Lieutenant, I'm very still taking note of that, Prof. Um, the feedback will take note of that. Now, this is from Patience. Patience Mao, she, she says, wow, critical thinking involves more than I thought. Critical thinking involves more than I thought. Then from thank you. Susan Diana. Yeah, thank you, Patience. Then Sazan Diara comes again and says, great and inspiring presentation. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, IOD Ghana. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Then we hear this from Jude, Jude Governor. Jude Governor says, I think we are nowhere near half of this session. <laughs> no. So, uh, Prof, people are really, would want a round two and uh, we'll, 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 come back, we'll come back on that. Thank you. I think at this stage, um, time check, I would hand over to Madam Moderator. I've read a few questions uh, for Madam Moderator to take it out from here. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you very much for attending this particular session. There's a lot that we can learn. Lady Reverend, I want to hand over to you, Madam. There are a number of hands up. Um, oh. I saw Edward Cabe's hand up, Lawrence Green's hand up. May we have your comments? Very much. And um, indeed, it has been very insightful and good to see Prof once again after a long time. My question was um, touched a little bit. Uh, about the cultural, it's about the cultural intolerance of uh, both critical and creative thinking, uh, you know, which makes it quite challenging, especially for us, those of us that are quite um, a bit young, you know, uh, in the corporate setting, but also in the social setting as well. And also believe that um, the very nature, the very important step, where when a superior or when even anybody, even within your team, uh, carries a, uh, an information.
education or makes um, especially setting tools of yes, but. You know, once it's yes, it should be yes. There shouldn't be any but. Uh, or yes, and once it's yes, it shouldn't be, there shouldn't be any end. And if you risk also for that, you'll be stereotyped. You'll be, you risk being tagged as, um, you know, arrogant. You risk being tagged as um, uh, haughty, as, as egoistic. And if it's a really close, I mean, quite, quite collateral. And I agree with Prof that it's difficult, especially in the public service. And how do you really navigate this? Is there any creative navigate this very challenge? And especially that of the youth. Thank you very much. The, 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 thank you. You know, we need to focus on different levels and categories of people who are involved in corporate governance, leadership, and so on. Because even children, we have leaders for children, small, small children, elementary schools, senior high schools, and so on. At every level, we need to empower those people. We need to teach them critical thinking. You know, some, some, some kids came from the US. I, I was in charge of, of them. And we are talking about critical thinking. They said, oh, we learned this in class five. Elementary class five, they learned critical thinking. But we don't even mention critical thinking even in our universities. So we, we are very much behind when it comes to critical thinking. We need to encourage it. We need to encourage students to ask questions. We need to encourage our children to ask questions and to disagree with us. That is something that we need to encourage. You know what? Culture is culture. We are not in our Santa Helena's palace or our Mafia's palace. We are in professional environment. And professional environment means professional behavior. When we are in Asante Hines Palace or Awomafia's Palace or Nigate's Palace, listen, we can talk about culture. But when we are in a professional environment, it is professional environment. It is what you can contribute to advance the interests and the best interest of the company and the shareholders. And culture should not prevent you from disagreeing with anybody you have to disagree with in the most respectful manner. Yeah, not arrogance, not brash, but in the most professional manner. There's always professional way of doing things. But we should not let culture, we should not let culture inhibit us from making our contributions to the on the floor. We should not allow that at all. Culture is culture. There's a place for culture and there's a place for professionalism. Mr. Mr. Kagandi. Yes, Prof. I see your hand up. Oh, yes. I wanted to make a comment to say it was a thought-provoking presentation and I'm excited to be part of this. And also, I want to attend part two and part three of your presentation. Thank you. <laughs> we will we, we'll make sure they take place. They will take place. So, <laughs> Professor Kobla John Aheto. Yes, sir. <laughs> My president. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a very, very powerful, very insightful, thought provoking, engaging delivery. Thank you. Um, I always say I would always learn at your feet. Thank you, and sir. I, I always ask. I always ask myself where you draw that energy from. <laughs> uh, we thank you very much for that uh, powerful, educative session, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I've taken notes of uh, Prof's delivery and note the following, that critical thinking is about asking a lot of questions. 
So in the boardroom, if we do not exhaust all the whys, we cannot make a decision. Sure. And that is very key, that is important. And that is one serious lesson I have learned today. Uh, when I was growing up, I remember my mother didn't like us asking a lot of questions. And I believe those are some of the cultural issues we're talking about. Yeah. I'll be telling her that, oh, probably she killed some of the, uh, our ability to ask very critical questions. Um, indeed, it's been very engaging session. Shoddy thinking is problematic. Yeah. We need to develop ourselves in a systematic and scientific manner. Sure. We need to develop ourselves to be an ideal critical thinker needed in the boardroom and yeah. in all fields of our endeavors. Sure. We must ensure we need 12 intellectual standards of critical yeah. thinking. Yeah. Clarity unambiguous, accuracy, precision, depth, must be significant, completeness, fairness, equity, and it must be just. The need for intellectual integrity, humility, confidence in reason, perseverance, fair and courage have been noted. Our nominations committee must do a more thorough job in board membership selection and recruitment. I also note that we need to relook really at our educational system to stimulate critical thinking and creativity. And again, we need to relook really at our cultural and social setting on the African continent to liberate the youth to be critical thinkers, and we need to empower them. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at today's meeting, we had over 160 participants attending the seminar from Ghana and other parts of the continent, from South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Zambia, and others as well. I particularly recognize the attendance of the Regional Minister of Upper West, Honorable Hafiz Salia, who is a fellow of the Institute of Directors Ghana. I also note the attendance of the President of Institute of Directors Zimbabwe, uh, Dr. Mike Juru, Again, I note the president of IOD Zambia, Mr. Edward Kabwe. I also note the attendance of past presidents of Institute of Directors Zambia, Madam Victoria and Madam Susan, and Sudair from South Africa, and all our council members of IOD Ghana and members as well. I wish to thank our speaker, Professor Kobla Jonaheto for sharing his rich knowledge and experience with us this afternoon. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Institute of Directors Ghana, I wish to thank all of you for your attendance. And we note your request to, for part two and three. We will work at it. I want to thank you once again. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. So on this note, shall we have a closing prayer? So Lord God, we thank you for the talents you have given us. We appreciate that we may have different talents and abilities. We may be challenge thinkers, beginning thinkers, practicing thinkers, advanced thinkers, but we know that there is nothing that is finite with you. So we are being mindful of your warning now let he who thinks he stands take heed lest they fall. We place our feeble hands into your omnipotent hands and ask you for the wisdom and excellence to govern our wells. Amen. Amen.